And Thea Butler joins me now from the US. She teaches religious studies and Africana studies at the University of Pennsylvania. Hello, thank you very much indeed for being with us. Now, as I mentioned before, protesters are saying in the US that it's going to take a lot more than charging four police officers to satisfy them. Several states considering at the moment legislation to reform police tactics. What's your reaction? What do you think needs to happen right now to calm the anger on the streets and to at least give people hope that things will get better? Well, I think that the charging of the four officers is a first step, however, I don't think, don't think that's enough. I think what we have to realize is that we have a situation right now in the United States where we don't have the proper kind of leadership that would be able to calm the nation down. And so besides that, these protests that are occurring and will probably continue to occur are about a long stemmed unjustice, long stem police brutality. And we're seeing the police brutality in the streets right now against unarmed uh, protesters who are not provoking the police. And so I think that this is going to be a long term thing. I don't think it's going to be short term. And I think that right now the things in America are really bad, but they're really bad because we have bad policing and we have horrible leadership at the top of our government. Leadership that has been uh, criticized even by military leadership, and it's very rare for them to speak out against uh, a sitting president. Uh, what's your reaction to that? Is that encouraging? Well, it's encouraging only in the sense that they're finally speaking up. I mean, I don't know why it has taken the military this long to talk about that, especially what General Mattis has said, because he was up close and personal with Donald Trump. So I think what we're seeing here is a, it, it's a bad situation. It's an absolutely awful situation. And secondarily, what I believe is that um, I hope that the military does not fire upon our citizens. I really do hope that because we don't want another Tiananmen Square here. We really don't. Now, Donald Trump has even managed to outrage religious leaders with that visit earlier this week. Uh, he, he went to a church and in order for him to get there, uh, peaceful protesters were dispersed. And that has obviously caused a lot of uh, controversy. He held up a, a Bible, some accusing him of using it as a as a prop. Just how much damage do you think this has done, especially when you consider that Trump is very popular amongst white evangelicals? I think it's done a lot of damage to him religiously. I mean, I think this is really for some people who have been swayed by him, the first time they've ever seen how he uses religion as a prop. Religion for Trump is something to be used when his, you know, basically his poll numbers are falling or that he can use to deflect from other things that are happening. And this particular stunt was egregious because basically his, you know, attorney general asked for people to be gassed so they could get a photo op. This is not a reality TV show. It's real life, and I don't think he's really realized that yet. Now, um, hoping to uh, step into his shoes at the White House, of course, is Joe Biden. Uh, he, um, it seems, is focusing on his ability to provide empathy in times of crisis, because, of course, that's something that a lot of people say that Donald Trump lacks, empathy. Uh, Joe Biden uh, benefiting hugely from the African-American vote during uh, the primaries. What do you think uh, is going to happen in November? And will what's happening at the moment and his reaction to it make any difference? Well, I'm hoping two things. One, that, you know, probably it looks like right now Joe Biden is leading in the polls so he can win. Secondarily, I hope that the rest of you might want to send some poll observers and things over to the U.S. because I don't know that this is going to be fair. Thirdly, I think that it's going to be very hard for Donald Trump to take a loss if he loses. And I think there's a very fair chance of that happening. So I think for Joe Biden, what he needs to do right now is to, you know, continue to be a uniter instead of a divider. He needs to continue to be forthright about the kinds of things that he would change about policing in this country. And he needs to make commitments to the African-American community that things will get better. And he needs to be specific about what those things are. Now, of course, it's on the one hand, not very long time before November, but it is obviously still a few months away. And, and even if uh, uh, there were to be a new occupant of the White House, it wouldn't be before January. Um, what would you like to see happen? You said this is obviously going to be a, a long battle to, to right the injustices. Uh, um, what would you like to see concretely, perhaps in the next few months? 
And concretely in the next few months, I'd like to see police de-escalate. One of the things that I think they don't realize right now is that all of these clips of them beating unarmed protesters, um, cutting up water bottles so that people can't drink water, um, tear gassing people and all of this continues to reinforce the violence that we are trying to tell them to stop doing. So that's number one. In my own city here in Philadelphia, they just took down a very big symbol of policing, Frank Rizzo. And so these kinds of symbols of policing, you know, these extra tanks and things that, you know, honestly, the military doesn't even use on a regular basis. These things need to stop. So that's one. On the other side, I think we need to have some calm, clear heads. Somebody needs to come out of this particular government, whether that's the Senate or the Congress or something, and begin to speak to the American people. I think all four presidents, living presidents, have said something by now. And I think that those are the things that can start healing in this country. I don't think we're going to get it, you know, for a very long time. But I think there can be things that can be used to quell some of what is going on right now. But I do think, and I want to make this very clear, that the protests are righteous. I think that they're warranted. And I think that they're an important part of changing things. That's part of what has happened in this country. Black people have been trying to protest for their rights for over 200 years. And I think that it's actually a travesty that we have to continue to do so. Absolutely. Thank you very much indeed for taking the time to join us here on France 24. Anthea Butler, thank you.